Welcome to the second video in our series on shock in children. The second form of shock that occurs in children is distributive shock, which is when the blood flow and volume is improperly and abnormally distributed through vessels, and there is decreased organ and tissue perfusion. Distributive shock can be identified as normal or decreased preload, normal or decreased contractility, and an afterload that is variable. The two key treatment options for distributive shock are restoration of hemodynamic stability and the identification and control of infection. Distributive shock is divided into three further types, septic shock, anaphylactic shock, and neurogenic shock. Septic shock is a serious condition that happens after a widespread infection of certain organisms or endotoxins, causing dangerously low blood pressure and organ failure. With septic shock, there is low tissue perfusion and oxygen. Septic shock can be identified by decreased preload, normal to decreased contractility, and an afterload that is variable. There are many signs of septic shock, including the following. Fever, hypothermia, elevated or decreased white blood cell count, petechia, herpera, metabolic acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, leukopenia, and leukocytosis. It is critical to the child's health and recovery to follow the proper steps if they go into septic shock. Give the patient oxygen and support ventilation. Obtain vascular access and get lab test and blood work. Administer repeated doses of 20 milliliter per kilograms boluses of isotonic fluid. Check and correct hypoglycemia and hypocalcemia, then give the first dose of antibiotics. Order a stat vasopressor drip and stress dose hydrocortisone. If you see that the child does not respond to the fluid treatment, it is best to start the vasoactive drug treatment. And the treatment you initiate will vary depending on blood pressure. For a normotensive patient, start with dopamine. For a hypotensive, vasodilated, or warm shock, start with norepinephrine. For a hypotensive, vasoconstricted, or cold shock, Start with epinephrine. Then evaluate the central venous oxygen saturation of the patient, keeping in mind that a normal range is between 70 and 80%. If the patient is under 70% with normal blood pressure and poor perfusion, then you will need to transfuse until a hemoglobin level of more than 10 grams per deciliter is reached. You may also consider giving milrinone or nitroprosside and dobutamine to the patient. If the central venous oxygen saturation of the patient is under 70%, they have low blood pressure and poor perfusion with cold shock, then you will need to transfuse until hemoglobin level of more than 10 grams per deciliter is reached. You should also consider epinephrine or alternately dobutamine and norepinephrine. If the saturation is over 70%, low blood pressure and warm shock, give the patient additional fluid boluses and norepinephrine with or without vasopressin as necessary. If there is still no response to fluid therapy in the child, transfer them to the ICU and continue monitoring. To learn more about the management of septic shock in a pediatric patient, please refer to the chart in this section. The second form of distributive shock is anaphylactic shock. This results in a widening of the blood vessels known as vasodilation and low blood pressure with bronchoconstriction, which causes the afflicted child to stop breathing immediately. Anaphylaxis is an allergic reaction that occurs in the presence of certain products, drugs, toxins, vaccines, plants, poisons, or antigens. Signs and symptoms of this shock include anxiety, agitation, nausea, vomiting, hives, swelling of the face, lips and tongue, 
respiratory distress including wheezing or strider, hypotension, and tachycardia. The primary goal in the treatment of anaphylactic shock is to target the problems and causes associated with bronchoconstriction and vasodilation. First, give the patient oxygen and support ventilation. Obtain vascular access and get lab tests and blood work. Administer an isotonic crystalloid bolus at a dose of 20 milliliters per kilograms over 5 to 20 minutes and repeat to restore blood pressure and tissue perfusion, then conduct ancillary studies. For a rapid recovery, administer the following four medications. 0.01 milligrams per kilograms of epinephrine in the thigh every 15 minutes or 0.01 milligrams per kilograms via IV or IO axis every three to five minutes. Four to eight puffs of albuterol for bronchospasm every 20 minutes or two and a half to five milligram per dose every 20 minutes for a nebulizer. An antihistamine H1 blocker of diphenhydramine in a dose of one to two milligrams per kilograms via IV, IO or intramuscular access every four to six hours with maximum dose of 50 milligrams. A corticosteroid of methylprednisolone in a dose of two milligrams per kilograms via IV, IO, or intramuscular access with a maximum dose of 80 milligrams. Continue treating and monitoring the pediatric patient until the child is out of shock. As a part of continued treatment, give the patient oxygen and support ventilation and within the first hour, administer repeated doses of 20 milliliter per kilograms or boluses of isotonic fluid. The final type of distributive shock is neurogenic shock. In this type of shock, there is a disruption of the autonomic pathway of the spinal cord. This is the result of head or spinal injury, which causes hypotension, bradycardia, and loss of sympathetic nervous system signals to the smooth muscle in the vessel walls. To properly manage neurogenic shock, follow the same initial treatment as with other types of distributive shock. First, give the patient oxygen and support ventilation. Obtain vascular access and get lab test and blood work. Administer an isotonic crystalloid bolus at a dose of 20 milliliters per kilograms over five to 20 minutes and repeat to restore blood pressure and tissue perfusion, then conduct ancillary studies. Position the child's head downward to improve venous return. If the child exhibits hypotension, consider using vasopressors, such as norepinephrine or epinephrine in the following doses. 0.1 to 1 microgram per kilogram of epinephrine per minute via IV or IO infusion. 0.1 to 2 microgram per kilogram of norepinephrine per minute via IV or IO infusion. Provide cooling or warming to the patient as needed. This concludes our second video on shock in children. Please proceed to the next video to learn more.